In this video, we're going to be rebuilding a set of WP closed cartridge bladder style forks. These forks were introduced back in 2007 on the KTM SX models and came stock on the XC models a year later. The forks ran through 2013 on the XCs and 2014 on the SXs, and in 2014 some Husqvarna and Huesberg models also came stock with this dual chamber fork. If you look at the fork cap, you'll see two Phillips head screws, one to access the inner bladder, and one used to bleed excess air out of the fork. You'll also see that it has grooves in the inner cap for the special tool used to separate the inner and outer fork caps. You'll also have compression adjustment on each fork cap. Don't confuse this fork with WP's newer closed cartridge fork, the 4CS. The 4CS is a four chamber system and has a slightly different looking fork cap. This newer fork design also separates compression in the left fork and then rebound is all controlled by the right fork. So just keep that in mind if you're unsure of what fork your bike is equipped with. To service these forks, we're gonna need a few standard tools along with a few specialty tools which are available through our website. We'll also need two quarts of fork oil, some high quality grease, and a new set of high quality fork seals as well. We're also gonna be replacing the dust seals while we have the fork apart and you can find all these parts along with OEM parts from all the major manufacturers on our website, www.rockymountainatbmc.com. You're also gonna need a service manual specific to your bike, which provides you with all the torque specs and capacities that you'll need for this job. It's important to note that the KTM manual explains this rebuild using a special KTM vacuum pump, and it also shows filling the bladder with nitrogen. This video is geared toward the average rider working in their own garage, so our process will be slightly different. We won't be using the vacuum method for the inner cartridge, and we'll be filling the bladder with air instead of nitrogen. Nitrogen is critical in a shock because they run hot. The forks on a motorcycle are large enough and run cool enough to where using nitrogen isn't necessary. So we already have both forks removed from this bike to speed things up. It's a good idea to loosen both of your fork caps with the forks still on the bike and your upper triple clamp pinch bolts loose. Keep in mind these steps are identical for both the fork legs, so we're only going to show the process on one side in this video. Now to begin disassembly, we're going to start by using a flat blade screwdriver, and we're going to pry out the dust seal from the upper fork tube, carefully not to scratch the lower fork leg. With the dust seal out of the way, we now have access to the retaining clip and we'll again use that screwdriver to carefully remove that clip from the outer fork tube. We're just gonna slide both of those pieces down the lower fork leg, and then we're gonna move over to our vise, and you can see that we've already got soft jaws in this vise, and that's to keep from damaging any part of the fork during this process. Now we're gonna move to the bottom of the fork leg, and using that same screwdriver, we're gonna remove the rubber cap that's covering the rebound adjuster. With that out of the way, we're gonna use some contact cleaner and a rag to clean up any dirt, to make sure it doesn't get inside the fork after we open it up. The next step is to record the current position of our rebound adjuster. And to do that, we'll just turn the adjuster in and count the number of clicks it takes until the adjuster bottoms out. This fork happened to be at 10 clicks out from fully seated. So we'll record that number and then we're gonna back the adjuster out all the way. When you're turning this adjuster either all the way in or out, You'll feel it lightly seat and you don't want to turn it any farther past that point to avoid damaging the adjuster. So after that we're going to take our 19mm socket and ratchet to loosen and separate that rebound adjuster from the lower fork leg. It's still going to be attached to the damper rod, so next we're going to compress the fork to push the rod and adjuster out the end of the fork, and then we'll slide our test cartridge rod holding tool into place on the damper rod. It might be easier for you to compress the fork by putting the top of the fork on the ground and using that to press against to make it easier to slide your rod holding tool into place. Also, if you have the test fork cap wrench, you'll notice that it has a rod holding slot built into it that works to hold your damper rod. But we chose to use the test cartridge rod holding tool because it's a little smaller and easier to maneuver. So now we're gonna take a 17 millimeter end wrench and our 19 millimeter socket to loosen and remove the rebound adjuster from the end of the damper rod. It's a good idea to have some clean rags set out so you can set parts on as you disassemble the fork. So after we've got that rebound adjuster removed, we'll sit that onto our clean rags. And then there's also gonna be a push rod that we're gonna remove. Slide that out of the damper rod and go ahead and set it onto our clean rags as well. After that, we can compress the fork again 
remove the rod holding tool and allow that to slide back into the fork. Next, we're gonna go ahead and remove the fork from the vise and we've got our oil catch pan. We're gonna drain the oil from the inside of the fork. While we have that oil draining, we're gonna to move to the top of the fork and use our tusk fork cap wrench to loosen and remove the inner cartridge assembly from the outer fork tube. Again, it's best to loosen this cap with the fork still on the bike and your upper triple clamp bolts loose. So now we're gonna be able to slide that outer tube down the fork and we can also pull the inner cartridge assembly completely out of the fork. We're just gonna set this aside for now and focus on the outer part of the fork. Remember that we already have our dust seal and retaining clip pulled, so we're ready to separate the fork tubes. It's a good idea to apply a little heat to the outer fork tube in the area that the oil seal is located. That's gonna make it easier to remove the seal and also avoid possibly causing any damage to your bushings. Obviously, you'd wanna remove any fork guard guides or sliders before applying heat, but after that, you can go ahead and slide the fork apart. It may take a few attempts, but eventually it will slide apart and reveal your oil seal, your washer, and both bushings. Next, we're gonna tip the fork up a little bit and remove the fork spring. And you can see that this fork spring also has a couple preload spacers on it. The number and size of these preload spacers will be specific to each individual fork, so just keep that in mind. The preload spacers are used to correct the overall spring length, so if you're changing fork springs, you'll need to refer to your service manual, but otherwise we'll be putting this fork back together the same as it came apart. So now we'll just clamp the fork back into our vise and you can see that we've got our oil catch pan underneath the catching the oil still draining from the fork. And now starting with the inner bushing, we'll gently remove everything from the lower fork leg. Just use your nails to gently spread this and slide it up off the fork leg. After that comes the outer bushing and then a washer. And after that, the oil seal is gonna come off and then the retaining clip is next and finally the dust seal. And again, we've got clean rags set out that we'll sit these parts out on in the same order that we remove them. Now's a good time to inspect your parts and determine if you need to replace anything. We already have new oil and dust seals, but you'll also wanna inspect your bushings to make sure that they don't need to be replaced as well. Always start by cleaning your bushings and then we'll look at the Teflon coating of each bushing. This is the dark gray layer on the outside of your inner bushing and the inside of your outer bushing. We're looking for any sign of wear or scarring or any small metal particles that are stuck to or embedded into the Teflon coating. If you find any sign of wear or damage, we recommend you replace them. Both these bushings look fine so we can move on to cleaning the fork leg. You also want to inspect it for any dents, dings, or scratches that could damage your new seals or bushings. After that, we're ready for reassembly. We're going to use our Motion Pro seal bullet, and this is used to protect the new seals from the sharp edges of the channel that the inner bushing sits in. But once we've got that in place, we're going to start by greasing the dust seal, and we'll slide that onto the lower fork leg first. After that comes the retaining clip, and then we're ready for the oil seal. And just a quick tip on knowing which way your oil seal needs to be installed, all fork seals will have a lip on bottom that usually sticks out away from the seal. Some of those will have a pressure spring on that lip and others won't. When we flip them over to the other side, you'll see a groove in the back of the seal with another lip and a pressure spring down inside. This is the side that will always face the oil because the oil and pressure inside the fork gets in around that lip and creates the seal. So on these forks, the oil seal would always sit like this with the groove up towards the oil. So now moving back over to our fork, we're gonna grease the new oil seal using plenty of grease and then carefully slide it down onto the fork. We also like to slap a little grease onto the outside of the seal to make it easier to remove in the future. Now that we have that in place, we can remove the seal bullet and install the washer, the outer bushing, and then we'll need to carefully spread that inner bushing and slide it onto the fork and into its groove. Now we're ready to reinstall the outer fork tube on the lower leg. So we'll make sure it's clean and then slide it down onto that lower leg. And now we're gonna need our fork seal driver. And we've got several options to choose from on our website, but we're using the test fork seal driver for this set of forks. We're gonna install it onto the lower fork and drive the outer bushing, washer, and seal up into the outer tube. You'll be able to hear when the seal is seated because it will sound solid. After that, we can slide our retaining clip up the fork and install it into its groove in the outer tube. 
You can go ahead and do that with your fingers and then we're gonna use the fork seal driver to seat it into that groove the rest of the way. And you'll wanna visually inspect that it's seated in that groove. After that, we can push the outer tube down and install the dust seal. And now we're done with the outer part of our fork for a minute. We're gonna remove it from the vise and set it upside down onto the rag to let any remaining oil from inside drain out. And now we'll take our inner cartridge and we're gonna gently clamp it into the vise like you see in the video. From here, we're gonna remove the inner cap from the outer one using our Tusk Fork Cap Compression Removal Tool. And to do that, we'll first need to remove the compression adjuster using our two and a half millimeter Allen wrench. And once we've got that out of the way, we're also gonna remove the access screw to the inner bladder. And that's the screw that's located closer to the center of the cap. So we'll go ahead and use a Phillips screwdriver to remove that. You'll also find a small O-ring underneath that screw that you'll wanna keep with the screw. Next, we're gonna take the Race Tech shock nitrogen needle and we're gonna use this to bleed the air out of the inner bladder. So we'll go ahead and pierce the bladder through the center of that access hole and you'll hear the pressure release once you've made it all the way through. After you let all the pressure out of that inner bladder, go ahead and remove the needle and put the cap back on it. And now we're ready to separate the inner and outer fork caps. So again, using our Tusk Compression Bolt Removal Tool and our Tusk Fork Cap Wrench, we're gonna use both of those to loosen and remove that inner bladder and cap from the rest of the cartridge assembly. Once we've got that backed out all the way, we'll be able to pull that cap and bladder assembly and sit it onto our clean rags. From here, we're gonna remove the cartridge assembly from our vise and we're ready to drain the oil from inside. So we've got our oil catch pan. We're gonna tip that upside down and pump the damper out a few times to help push that oil out. And after we've got most all that oil out, we're gonna sit this cartridge assembly upside down on a rag and let it drain for about 10 or 15 minutes to let any extra oil still inside the cartridge drain out. After we've let that cartridge sit and drain for a while, we're gonna reclamp it into our vise and we're ready to fill the cartridge with fresh oil. So we're gonna fill the cartridge to about here with fork oil and you'll see later that we are intentionally overfilling the cartridge to get rid of as much air as we can. So after we've done that, we're gonna move down and pump the damper rod through its stroke. This will feel easy at first, but as oil fills the cartridge, you'll feel it get stiffer and have more consistent resistance as you pump the damper rod through its stroke. After about three or four times, you shouldn't feel any more air in the system. So we're gonna leave the damper rod fully extended and we'll let that cartridge sit for about 10 minutes to allow any air bubbles in the oil to raise to the top before we reinstall the bladder. You may need to add a little more oil to bring the oil level back up. And then after we've let it sit for about 10 minutes, we're ready to reinstall the bladder back into the cartridge. Bladder should be deflated when you install it and you'll also wanna have an oil catch pen underneath the fork. This is because we're trying to eliminate any air in the fork. So because we've overfilled it with oil, it's gonna spill out as we install the bladder. Again, we'll use our Tusk compression bolt tool to tighten down this inner cap. And then we'll also wanna torque this to the factory 22.1 foot-pounds torque spec. After that, we're gonna remove the fork from the vise and re-clamp it with the filler port as the highest point. Next, we're gonna use our 2.5 millimeter Allen wrench to remove that filler port screw. And there's also gonna be a small O-ring underneath that that you'll wanna keep with that screw. The point of this next step is to get the correct oil volume inside the cartridge and the correct air volume inside the bladder. So now we've got our race tech needle mounted onto our Tusk digital suspension pump, and we're gonna pump the bladder up to seven PSI. As we do this, it's gonna expand the bladder and also push oil out of the cartridge. So we've got our catch pen underneath to catch the oil as it comes out. After we have seven PSI added to the bladder, we should now have the correct volume of oil inside the cartridge. So we can go ahead and reinstall that filler port screw and O-ring, being careful not to over tighten the screw. Next, we're gonna again reposition the cartridge in the vise, and this time we wanna locate the check valve at the highest point. That's so any air bubbles that are still in the system will work their way up and get pushed out. So now we're gonna go back to our suspension pump and needle, and this time we're gonna pump the bladder up to the manufacturer's recommended setting, which is 1.2 bar or 17 PSI. It might take a minute to get up to that pressure, but when you do, 
we found that it's best to go 1 to 2 psi higher because it's going to lose 1 to 2 pounds as you pull that needle out. The next step is to bleed the inner chamber and we do that by simply running the damper rod through its stroke and you'll notice air bubbles come out of the bleeder valve as you do that. We're going to go ahead and do that two to three times and you should also notice the damper rod extending all the way by itself after being compressed. Now we can move up to the cap and reinstall the o-ring and screw into the bladder access hole and then we'll also reinstall the compression adjuster onto the fork cap. And now the inner cartridge assembly is ready to go back into the fork tubes. But before we do that, we need to make sure that the lock nut on bottom of the damper rod is threaded on as far as it can go to allow the rebound adjuster to thread onto the rod all the way. So now we've got the outer part of the fork, we're going to reinstall the spring and any preload spacers that came out with the spring. After that, we can install the inner cartridge assembly. And once you've got that in far enough, just slide the outer tube up and thread it to the outer cap. We're just going to hand tighten this cap for now because we need to get back into the fork to add the rest of our oil. So once we've got that hand tight, pick the fork back up and clamp the bottom of it back into the vise. And then we're going to compress the fork again and use our test cartridge rod holding tool to hold the end of the damper rod out of the end of the fork. Now we can reinstall our push rod and then after we've got that into place, we're going to thread our rebound adjuster onto the damper rod. And the rebound adjuster should bottom out on the rod before reaching the jam nut. So once you've done that, we're going to take our wrenches and we're going to back the jam nut up against the end of the rebound adjuster. After that, we'll take our torque wrench and tighten this nut down to 22 foot pounds. After that, we're going to compress the fork again and remove that cartridge rod holding tool. And then we can tighten down the rebound adjuster into the lower fork leg. We're also going to torque this and it's the same 22 foot pounds. The next step is to reset your rebound adjustment. So we had ours recorded at 10 clicks out. So to get back to that, we'll start by turning the adjuster all the way in until it bottoms out. After that, we're going to count 10 clicks out from fully seated. And after you've got your rebound adjustment set, go ahead and reinstall the rubber cap for the bottom of the fork leg. The last step is to add the rest of the fork oil. So we're using a ratio right to measure out the right amount. And this bike service manual calls for 365 milliliters of oil. To add it, we're just going to undo the outer cap and slide the outer fork tube down. And then we kind of like to lay the fork over a little bit and then pour the oil onto the middle cartridge. And that helps keep the oil going where we want it to. Once we've got it all added, we'll just slide the outer tube up, thread it onto the outer cap, and tighten it down. Now this fork is ready to go back on the bike. If you have any questions about any of the steps in this video, feel free to give us a call at 1-800-336-5437. Remember that all the parts and special tools that are needed for this job are available on our website, www.rockymountainatvmc.com. Thanks for watching.